Do you decorate for St. Patrick's Day? I don't go all out, but I do like to create some decor for one of my tiered trays. In today's video, I'm sharing five decor and DIY ideas for St. Patrick's Day, and it's also part of a monthly challenge that I host with my friend Sarah from GGB DIY each month on the fourth Friday, and it's called, well, you guess it, it's called the fourth Friday Open Playlist. So links to Sarah's channel and the playlist will be below, so be sure and check it out. And if we haven't met yet, my name is Lisa, and this is Our Gray House. I found this little sign at Dollar Tree and I almost passed it up, but I thought, you know, I could just saw off the top part. So that's what I did. I used my miter saw and I took off the top part of it. And of course I kept the little piece that I sawed off because you never know when you might need something like that for another project. I gave the inside of the box two coats of folk art paint in the color bright green, I think is the one I used and I ended up going back and then going around the edges of the box as well. But I didn't do the outside and the back. I just did the front, <laughs> as you can see. I did use my Cricut to cut out a decal that said March 17th, and I'm just weeding it out and putting on transfer tape, and then I'll transfer it to the little box. You could also either use like a fine tip paintbrush and some white paint or a paint pen and do the same thing. And this is how it turned out. I really like the green color that I chose and I like the pop of white and I just think it's going to look super cute on my tear tray. So I found these little gift tag things at Hobby Lobby and in my store it's on the end cap by the his and her section but it is quote unquote discounted already so it has like a little bit of a different tag on it, it looks kind of like a clearance tag and so it never goes on sale anyway they had a it's like a pack of 12 and it was a decent price I can't remember how much it was but it's a decent price and so I was just taking one of those and I was giving it a paint, a coat of this lime colored paint. I think it was lime colored. I don't like it, so I end up doing a different color. I end up painting around the edges with, I think it was spring green, and I'm sorry, I don't remember the names of the, the colors that I used, but I didn't paint the whole thing because I'm taking this image that I printed out, and it was a, a free Google image, and I printed it out and it says St. Patrick's Day and it's got like a little girl in a petticoat dress. Anyway, I cut that out and I knew I was going to be covering up most of the tags so I didn't paint at all. And I'm just using a glue stick that I got from Dollar Tree and gluing the area and then I'm going to press the image down. So then y'all, I put that jute twine hanger back in and then I have like 10 minutes of footage of me sitting, like not sitting on the struggle bus, I'm driving the struggle bus, trying to put a bow on this thing. I end up not putting a bow, but I'd like to take this opportunity to remind you to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell so that YouTube will notify you every time that I share something new. And this is how it turned out. I think it is so sweet and it's going to look so cute on my tear tray. Okay, for DIY number three, I've got this little crate that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm going to be making a book stack out of it. But I did have to sand it down just a little bit because some of the stuff at Dollar Tree is, is rough. I'm just going to be honest, it's rough. <laughs> so sometimes you have to sand it a little bit to get it smoother so that not only it takes the paint better, but also if you're going to be applying any decals or doing any like detailed work on it, it just makes it better if it's a smoother surface. So I give it a good coat of the folk art paint in the color bright green. I just love this color. I did cut out a decal using my Cricut 
that says you're my lucky charm and I just weeded it I put on transfer tape and then I transferred it to the crate the size of my text was one inch and that seemed to work really well where you could see it easily and it wasn't too hard to weed and it wasn't too hard to transfer on but again you could use a you know you could paint it on or use a paint pen and get the same effect I decided to glue on some craft paper to the top of the book stack and I'm just using some Dollar Tree stick glue and applying glue to the paper as well as to the top of the crate and then just pressing it down. And to finish the piece off, I am using Baker's twine. I know I'm not using jute twine, what? <laughs> but I'm using some Baker's twine and I'm wrapping it around several times. I don't know how many times I go around, but I'm gonna be honest, I really don't think the Baker's twine looks good. So I may just take off the twine or replace it. I don't know, let me know what you think. And this is how the piece turned out. I like it. I think the font I used was cute and I love the colors, but I just don't know about that Baker's twine. So let me know in the comments below what you think. And if I take off the Baker's twine, what should I put in the place? I would love to hear your thoughts. Y'all, I'm using that paint again, Adirondack. Yeah, hey, that was pretty good. <laughs> so I'm using that paint on this little mason jar. Now I did already sand off what was on there. It had some, these little like foam flowers or whatever. Try to get it off, but you still can kind of see it. So I'm gonna paint it and see how it, see how it does. I also give two coats of paint to the back as well because I think that's the side I'm going to end up using. This little shamrock piece came from Hobby Lobby and it was 40% off. It came in a pack of like small, medium, and large and this is the small size. So I'm giving it a coat of that bright green paint from Folk Art. And as I said, I did end up going with the back side for this project and using my Cricut again, I cut out the letters L, V, and E, and I'm going to be putting that on the front of this project, the back of the project. That's now the front of the project. <laughs> so <laughs> I've got those all transferred on and then I'm taking that little shamrock and I'm adding some detail with my paint pen, just some little lines and dots just to kind of give it a little extra oomph, you know, that kind of thing. I could still see some areas on that little thing, so I decided to make DIY number five, and I'm using that craft paper that I used earlier, and I'm just going, going to use a glue stick and glue it on. Sometimes I use Mod Podge, sometimes I use glue stick, it just depends. Sanding off the edge with my finger sander to make the edges smooth. As you can tell, DIY number four and five are kind of the front and back of a project. So I'm just hot gluing on that little shamrock that I just embellished, and now I'm adding some jute twine around the top of this little mason jar shaped wood piece that I'm working on. So this is how DIY number five turned out, which is the back side of DIY number four. And I had added a bow to the top of it and I think it looks cute. I think it would be a cute piece on, as kind of like a filler piece on your tear tray. I'm not gonna lie. This is probably my favorite project of today's video. I just, I just like how it looks and I think it's going to look so cute on my tear tray and I would love to hear what your favorite DIY of today's video is. Leave me a comment below and let me know. I wanted to let y'all know that I run a Facebook group called 
Crafty DIYs on a Budget is for crafters. So if you are a crafter, I hope you consider joining. The link is going to be in the description box below as well as a link to Sarah's channel who runs that group with me and a link to the fourth Friday playlist. I sure hope you guys check that out as well. Here is another look at today's projects. I really had a lot of fun creating these and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and share this with your friends. It really does help YouTube to notice my channel just a little bit more and it helps my channel grow. And if you want to follow me here on YouTube or over on Instagram, it's Our Gray House. But just don't follow me in real life, though, because that's creepy. Bye!